Next, we'll go over to Keith at Anel Green Power, who is using GIS for operational maintenance on an everyday basis, including monitoring lightning strikes in near real time and pushing the information out to potentially impacted staff out in the field, which is key to minimizing downtime and giving field staff one source of truth while keeping them safe. Please take it away, Keith. Well, thanks for the introduction. My name is Keith Aubin. I'm the chapter leader of the geographical information platform at NL North America. So I represent the, the IT side of our organization and am focusing on GIS as a platform for NL. A little bit about Enel. Uh, we are the world's largest network operator and the largest player in the renewable industry space and the largest retail customer base worldwide. Uh, we operate in 32 countries with over 49 gigawatts of renewable capacity and are on track to triple that um, by 2030 and have a pledge to be carbon neutral by 2050. Um, in North America, we operate over six gigawatts of renewable energy projects uh, including wind, solar, and geothermal technology, with the largest growth right now being in the wind and solar industries, and in particular, the Texas markets. So this presentation, I hope to show everybody some examples of how we can make uh, some real-time solutions in our ArcGIS enterprise, or even ArcGIS online environments, um, using low code and other automation solutions. In particular, webhooks are a very powerful piece of technology to integrate uh, systems operating on, on different networks and different domains to be able to exchange information. Uh, so what you're seeing in front of you here is a screenshot of our lightning strike dashboard and alerting system. So this was primarily built using ArcGIS Enterprise uh, with GeoEvent Server. You know, some interesting developments uh, from Esri or their new uh, our ArcGIS Online uh, Velocity. Um, so that could be another approach to do a very similar uh, solution. Um, but in this example, we're using uh, GeoEvent Server. Uh, so for those unfamiliar with GeoEvent Server, it is a tool that's part of ArcGIS Enterprise that allows us to consume real-time data, uh, process it, and um, you know display it in our web maps uh, very efficiently. So on this uh, dashboard you can see here on the left side we're showing the number of standard alerts and critical alert lightning strikes uh, currently uh, focused on what's shown in this current map view uh, as you zoom out it will you know show the entire portfolio so in this example here we can see that there were six critical strikes at this wind farm uh, in the past 30 days uh, and so the definition of what a critical strike is is in the upper right hand corner we'll go into that in a little bit more detail in a minute um, other recent capabilities that we've added to this platform is integration with our Aussie Soft Pi server. So that is a SCADA aggregation system um, that aggregates all the different operating metrics from our plants worldwide uh, and provides them through a REST interface uh, that we're able to leverage through our geo event server and integrate that data as well into our map. Um, we'll be primarily focusing on uh, lightning alerts but I wanted to point that out as well. So the primary features of this uh, solution that we're going to present here are real-time alerts with custom distribution lists. Um, and in particular, we leverage survey one, two, three to uh, create a sign-up process for those distribution lists. And we're gonna cover how we interconnected all those processes together using webhooks in an automation platform called Integromat. Um, in that dashboard, we can view current and historical lightning strikes. And as I mentioned earlier, the integration with our Pi server to show the real-time operational status of wind turbines. And uh, so going over the, the business requirement that was supplied to our group um, was that there's a new operational requirement for the inspections of wind turbines after a lightning strike meeting the following criteria below. So an amplitude um, lower than negative 75 kiloamps or greater than one kiloamp with a duration of more than 10 seconds. Uh, so the positive amplitude lightning strikes are the ones that are most likely to cause damage. And while our turbines are equipped with lightning attenuation systems, uh, they're not foolproof and occasionally can be damaged by lightning strikes. Uh, so with the solution we're gonna present here, we'll show how uh, as lightning strikes happen in real time, uh, messages are provided to our field personnel where they're able to then log into our dashboard and evaluate that lightning strike, other activity in the area, as well as the operational status of that turbine. Uh, so they can make a rapid decision of if that turbine is showing a fault code to perhaps shut it down to prevent further damage. 
Um, but as a general operating practice, after a lightning strike, when the weather's clear the following morning, they uh, should go out to the site and then do an inspection. Uh, quite frequently, uh, we're using drones for those inspections. So they're able to get up there close and look for any damage. And this can save us quite a lot of money by uh, identifying problems before they propagate. So a turbine blade is a big piece of fiberglass, just like a boat hull. So a small crack in it that could have been caused by a lightning strike or um, sublimation of uh, the fiberglass can propagate over time. And a, what would be a cheaper repair can eventually turn into a very expensive repair or a catastrophic failure. So systems like this allow us to uh, stay on top of maintenance activities. So you can see on the lower left here, uh, this is what a typical alert lightning strike will look like. It's listing the project name, that code is our internal SAP plant code, and then the project name. And this alert was triggered for wind turbine C14 and showing the date, amplitude, and duration. So on this next slide here, we're showing the data process flow. So we're receiving this data from a weather service provider called DTN. What's really great about this company is they provide all of these streams of data in a native uh, Esri feature service formats. So they're very easy to integrate into your ArcGIS online or ArcGIS portal environments. You can just bring them in, store the credentials, and then uh, add them to your maps. Uh, so what is happening is we have our ArcGIS geo event server that is monitoring that feed coming from DTN, along with coming from our relational data store, the geofences of the particular turbines that we are monitoring. So I'm just gonna back up here and you can see those red circles around each wind turbine. Those are the alert areas for a critical lightning strike. So that's the turbine tip height plus 100 meters, which is the spatial accuracy of the lightning data supplied by DTN. So it's a, pretty high probability that if a lightning strike took place inside of that radius, it hit the wind turbine. Uh, so the geo event server takes in that uh, DTN feature service and the geo fences, it analyzes it, it outputs ones that uh, meet our criteria into a spatial temporal data store as an alert strike. And that database grows larger over time and allows us to uh, determine trends. And uh, at the end of this, I'll do a live demo and show an example of what that can look like. Um, so one of the other outputs of the geo event server is it's passing a webhook to Integromat. Uh, so uh, many of you may be aware of Integromat. It's a very useful tool, especially if you're using survey one, two, three uh, to automate downstream processes. Um, but you can make uh, webhooks from geo event server just the same and then the reason why we're using this is we have our distribution list system and we're sending out notifications through Office 365. While GeoVent Server itself can send email notifications, we have a more uh, intricate process that breaks them down depending on someone, uh, whether a user is subscribed to all alerts, alerts for a particular generation technology like wind or solar, or alerts just for a specific plant. And that's a much easier process for us to manage uh, using uh, Integromat and Office 365. So here is a little bit of insight to what's going on behind the scenes inside of Geo Event Server. So this is the processor here. And you can see on the left, the input is the cloud to ground lightning strike that's coming from DTN. We're using the Geo Tagger to identify if that lightning strike is inside of our project boundary alert areas. Um, so what that is, is it's our, our project boundary plus two kilometers. So we're, we're cataloging all the lightning that's falling anywhere near our plants. Um, so then, then it passes it on to the next filter. So if the project is not equal to null, it continues along this path. So then that means that lightning strike has fallen with inside our alert area. And we are now doing another geo tagger to identify which particular asset that lightning strike is correlated with. So which turbine, uh, which uh, inverter for a solar project or which met tower uh, and, and items like that. So the, the next process that happens here uh, basically breaks down whether this is a critical alert strike or not. Um, and if it's a critical alert strike, it's going to be passed. You can see in the, the upper right hand corner uh, to a JSON output to Integromat. Um, but in any event, they all go into our spatial temporal big data store. So you can see all those paths uh, converging together. So that's a little bit of insight of how this process works in Geo Event Manager. Uh, so here's an example of how to create a webhook to Integromat uh, 
from GeoEvent Server. It's actually quite simple. You just set up an output push to JSON external website. And you can see here, um, you can give it whatever name that pleases you. And you'd simply input the URL that you generated um, on IntegraMat for that particular webhook. You can see here, I blurred out our particular URL, but all you would have to do on IntegraMat is make a new input webhook, um, set up a new listening um, a webhook, and then paste in that, uh, that URL here. And then on the right, you can see what information is being passed to IntegraMat. So you can see that bundle that is including the object ID, amps, date, time, and everything else relevant to that uh, lightning strike. And here's an example of how this distribution list process works and why we're choosing to use IntegraMat for this. And you know what's great about this solution is this is a low code situation or pretty much no code in, the, in this uh, uh, example here. So the webhook is received from GeoEvent server. It's now being routed to whether it matches the criteria of all projects for a specific technology or for a specific project. So there's some, some filtering going on there to pass it down those particular paths. And then we're storing the distribution list in an Office 365 Excel spreadsheet. And it's actually quite simple. We have one worksheet for each distribution list. And then the IntegraMat process aggregates that into an array and puts it into an email that's sent through our Office 365 connection. And you can see on the right what the output of one of these alerts look like. So, this is uh, going to show you now how you can manage a distribution list starting with survey one, two, three. Um, this is by no means the only way that you can do this. This is just a, a pretty uh, good example of how you can use survey one, two, three for things beyond collecting information in the field. Uh, so in this example here, we're collecting data or the, the user's uh, subscriptions via a survey one, two, three distribution form, which is then being passed to IntegraMat through its connector to watch survey from uh, survey one, two, three. That's a specific connector available in IntegraMat. Um, and because uh, IntegraMat does have some limitations and how much we can manipulate data, we chose to use a custom, uh, excuse me, a custom Python process uh, to actually parse the response from survey one, two, three and update our Excel worksheet. And, and the way that we're doing that is through Jenkins. So Jenkins is a DevOps tool and we've exposed a webhook to Jenkins via a reverse proxy in IIS. And that allows us to have a great deal of flexibility on exactly how we manipulate the data to put it in that Excel worksheet. Again, there's other ways that you could approach this. Uh, this is just what worked for us. And we're gonna go into a bit more detail on how all this works. So here's a couple screenshots of the survey one, two, three form. Um, as you can see, we had to put a little bit of a warning up there because you do need a uh, field worker or a level two creator license in order to use survey one, two, three, even on the web. Um, most of our users that are in our operations group have that level of access, but in the event that they don't, we direct them towards our site support page where they can request access through uh, Anel's identity management systems. And you can see on this form here that it's pulled my username from our single sign-on uh, user accounts and my email address from my profile from a portal, again, passed through single sign-on. So no need for the user to enter that information. And then they simply select whether they want to subscribe to alerts, unsubscribe from alerts, and if they subscribe to alerts, they can pick which one as they want. They can pick all plants, they can pick uh, generation technology, or in this example here, I'm subscribing to all solar, solar alerts and then three particular wind plants. So whenever a lightning strikes any of our solar operations, I would be notified or those particular wind plants. So here's a screenshot of how this process then works inside of IntegraMat. Um, and so that we're watching again that survey and we have a router here based off of the selection. So if they selected unsubscribe, it's going to go down and that HTTP make a request is calling the webhook that we set up on our Jenkins server um, and is passing along that the user has uh, requested to unsubscribe. And after that webhook is successfully completed, it sends an email to the user confirming that they've been unsubscribed. And then uh, the other route is if they chose to subscribe to a particular project uh, or all projects, it goes one of two routes. If they subscribe to all projects, it um, you know adds them to that particular list. And if they subscribe to a, a, a sub selection, it, it activates that other route there. And due to the way that we set up our 
our custom Python script to make it more simple. Um, that's why we have two routes here. I'm not going to go into the full details on, on how that script works, because there's certainly many ways that you could go about approaching it. We originally attempted to uh, do all of this in Integromat, but you know, ran into some limitations. It's not the most flexible platform in the world for more advanced data manipulation, uh, even though it can connect to an Excel spreadsheet and update it. So we, we opted to use the Python script. And again, we use Jenkins because that's a tool we use for many other automations tasks. But other ways that this could also be accomplished is you could take that Python script and publish it as a geoprocessing tool and call it that way. It could be published as an AWS Lambda functions or to whatever other DevOps platform that your organization utilizes. Uh, so again, there's no right or wrong. It's whatever works best and you're best able to support. So showing what this looks like in the Office 365 Excel spreadsheet, um, you know, looking on the right here, we can see our spreadsheet and column A just simply has the list of all the people who are, have subscribed to the distribution list. And on the bottom are all the different worksheets in this uh, Excel workbook. So each one of those is an individual distribution list. And, you know, looking at the process that I showed you earlier of how the webhooks are passed from our geo event server and are then reading this Excel file that you see on the right to aggregate that into an array and send the appropriate notification. So uh, any alert that comes in is going to trigger that route for all projects. And you can see there the second tab for the worksheets is all projects. It's going to notify everybody on that list. Uh, so if we have an alert coming in for a solar or let's say a wind uh, turbine had been struck that's going to trigger the route for the wind technology. And you can see again down there, uh, there's a worksheet for wind and those people would be notified. And then if uh, for the specific project, it would trigger that route and then also notify people subscribing to that particular process. And the way that we can keep people from getting multiple notifications was through our survey one, two, three form. We added enough logic to it that it's impossible for somebody to uh, subscribe to all wind projects and then also subscribe to an individual wind project. Um, so that logic is controlled through uh, the input from the user uh, via survey one, two, three. It's extremely uh, versatile in that uh, capability. Okay. As I promised before, here's a live demonstration of our, our lightning dashboard. So we can see here on the right, uh, some re recent lightning strikes. And I'm just going to zoom in on one of those plants and we'll show you how this all works. So here's our, our Osage wind farm. And we can see that it did have, in fact, a couple of uh, recent critical lightning strikes. And in this example here, we can see that this particular strike uh, took place on the 9th and that this turbine is uh, down for maintenance right now for repairs. Uh, so you can show that in, in this one interface that a lot of actionable information is readily available. Um, other things that we can do here are we can apply various map filters to better look for trends. So we can filter for by time, the default is 30 days, but we can go ahead and flip this on to all time. And all time being when we started recording uh, lightning strikes, which is around last July. So right away, you can see some trends here that certain wind turbines are more susceptible to being struck versus other wind turbines. And this gives the information necessary to our operations crew uh, to optimize their maintenance procedures. They can inspect the ones more frequently struck more often and forego as frequent inspections on the ones that are uh, less impacted by lightning. Um, other things that we can do is change the heat map from our monitored assets to um, within two kilometers of our, our project boundary, which can give a little bit more insight into uh, some of the lightning activity, in particular what happened during this uh, storm not long ago.